Welcome to Electro Online. The more challenging factoring problems are the ones that don't have a 1 in front of the x squared term. In this case, the coefficient in front of x squared is 6. So how do you factor something like that? Well, there's different techniques, and let me show you the first of the different techniques. Well, let's call it method 1. What we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this trinomial and turn it into a polynomial with four terms. In other words, we take the 6x squared and write it over there. We give it some more room in the middle. We write, take the minus 20 and write it over there. And then we realize that we're going to take the middle term and write it as the sum of two middle terms. Two terms with the variable x with a numerical coefficient in front. We just don't know what those two numerical coefficients are. So we're going to have to put an x and an x there, but we don't know yet what's going to go in front of those x's. Two numbers. The way to determine those two numbers is to realize that if you take this 6 and this 20 together and you multiply them together, that the product of that is equal to 6 times minus 20. Whoop, I got ahead of myself. Minus 20, which is equal to minus 120. In other words, whatever these two numbers are, the product of these two numbers together should be minus 120. You obtain that by multiplying these two numbers together. And the sum must equal 7. Whenever you, add, whenever you make these two numbers, when you add them together, you should get back the original middle term that you started with. So you're looking for two numbers. The sum is 7, and the product is a negative 120. The fact that the product is negative means that one number must be positive and one number must be negative. And since the sum is a positive 7, the positive number must be bigger than the negative number. So what are the possibilities? Well, for example, you can have a 10 and a negative 3. When you add those two together, you get positive 7. However, when you multiply them together, you get negative 30, which is not negative 120. So what you can do is plug in all the combinations so that when you add them together, you get a positive 7. For example, 11 and negative 4, 12 and negative 5, 13 and negative 6, 14, negative 7, 15, negative 8, 16, negative 9, 17, negative 10, and so forth. Now, only one of those combinations will give you a, hundred, a negative 120 when you multiply them together. You know that when you multiply these two together, you get, when you multiply them, you get negative 30, so that's not it. When you multiply these two together, you get negative 44, that's not it either. When you multiply these two together, you get negative 60. Notice you're getting closer and closer and closer to the value you're looking for. So if you keep going, eventually you're going to realize that when you multiply these two together, 15 times negative 8, that gives you a minus 120, which is the correct value. And when you add the two together, 15 and a negative 8, that gives you a positive 7. So that's the combination you're looking for. So here you can put down plus 15x, and here minus 8x. And that will give you now a polynomial with four terms that you can now factor. Again, when you add these two terms together, 15x minus 8x gives you plus 7x. So you get the exact same thing, just written in a different format. Now you're going to use the grouping technique. You're going to group the first two together, and you're going to group the last two together. So on the first two, notice you can factor out mm, a 3 and an x. So when I factor out a 3x, I end up with a 2x plus 5. And here, notice I can factor out, it looks like maybe a minus 4. Yes. How about a minus 4? When I do that, I end up with a 2x plus 5. Now notice when I group this together and I group this together like that, I can see that I have a common factor. 2x plus 5 is common to 2x plus 5. Therefore, I can factor out a 2x plus 5. So this is equal to 2x plus 5. What I have remaining is on the left side, I have a 3x remaining, and here I have a minus 4 remaining. In other words, the original problem, 6x squared plus 7x minus 20 can be factored into the quantity 2x plus 5 and the quantity 3x minus 4. Again, the technique is to rewrite this trinomial as a polynomial with four terms, the middle term will now be written as a sum of two middle terms. 
how to find the coefficients? Well, you realize that the sum of them must be 7 and that the product must be equal to the product of the first and the last coefficient. In this case, minus 120. You look for all the combination of numbers that when you add them together, you get a positive 7. Notice that the positive number must be 7 bigger than the negative number, so when you add them together, you get 7, like 10 and negative 3. But when you multiply together those two numbers, you should get the minus 120. The only combination that works is 15 times a negative 8. That gives you a negative 120. And when you add them together, you get the positive 7. So therefore, you write these two coefficients over here. And then you use the grouping technique to do your factoring. And that's how it's done.